there we are live from midtown comics times square i am henry and it is new comic book day it is wednesday the best day of the week of course it's a big week for comics there's a lot of cool stuff out dc dark horse dynamite lots of d's lots of other great books that are coming out and we can't wait to walk down this wall and talk about them so we're going to get started right off the bat now before we do anything we're going to of course talk about some of the cool picks of the week that we've got so we've got miguel recommending she hulk issue number 159 by mariko tamaki very fun series reclaiming its legacy numbering this week then we also have kong on the planet of the apes now this is awesome that is of course king kong teaming up and facing off against the planet of the apes characters you know that him and caesar probably aren't going to get along too well then we have port of earth a brand new image series from our buddy zach kaplan very cool series, just starting off this week if you want some sci-fi flair in your life. Then we've got the brand new issue of Kid Lobotomy from IDW, Jade's a big fan. And then we also have, of course, from Sarah, Runaways, issue number three, Rainbow Rowell and Chris Honka are having a lot of fun on their book, and I'm excited to talk more about it later, but let's get into the meat of this week. And first off, we've got the brand new issue of Harrow County from Cullen Bunn. Dark Horse has been putting this book out for a while, and you know why? Because it's that good. Really cool series. Colin Bunn's been having a lot of fun. If you want something that's got a little bit of edge to it, a little bit of grime. Very cool series. Then we also have the brand new issue of Hellboy and the BPRD 1955. Occult Intelligence. Mike McNolan and Chris Roberson having a lot of fun on this book. Doing some really cool stuff involving Hellboy, the BPRD. And of course, it is a period piece, which is always integral to the world of Hellboy. Now, as we go down, we do hit DC, and we've got Batgirl and the Birds of Prey manslaughter. The men of Gotham are dying, and only the birds and their allies can save them. Now, this is perfect. This is so appropriate for the Birds of Prey. Of course, the premier all-female team in comic books to be in a story called manslaughter. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if they're going to want to save all those guys. They're kind of jerks. Can you blame them? But very cool story, very excited, and I love that Yannick Paquette cover. Now, as we move down, we also have the brand new issue of Detective Comics, A Lonely Place of Living. This story is crazy. And, like, this story makes my inner fan so happy because it is, of course, a Tim Drake-centric story. James Tynan IV has been having a lot of fun on this series, focusing on Tim Drake and also bringing in elements of old continuity, and that makes me happy. The second I was reading through this, and it had a reference to the Titans of Tomorrow storyline that Jeff Johns did like a decade ago, that's when you know that this is really for the fans. Great stuff going on here. Now, as we move down, we do have the brand new Batman Lost interlude for Dark Knight's Metal. Now, this is very cool. Of course, it's Scott Snyder. It's James Tynan. And we've got a bunch of other great collaborators on it, like Joshua Williams with Dun Mankey, Yana Paquette, and Jorge Jimenez. Now, that is a loaded roster. And this book has some great stuff. You know it's going to be cool. And you know it's got that cool metallic cover that all the Batman Metal books have had. Very great stuff. As we move down, we've got the brand new issue of Gotham City Garage. If you want Mad Max fused with the ladies of the DC Universe, you got to check out Gotham City Garage. Also, can we talk about how cool that logo is and how great this cover is? I love it. I'm in love with this book. It's great. It's everything you could possibly want. And it's based off of some really cool statues. Now, as we move down, we also have the brand new issue of Harley Quinn. Of course, vote for Harley. This cover's fun. Frank Cho's having a lot of fun on these covers. That is a really cool-looking horse, you know? The, uh, the, this, it works. It just works. It's a really cool cover. Very cool. Very fun series. And I'm really enjoying what Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti have been doing on this book. Bruce Timms, of course, jumping in on the art. And it is it's a, a hallmark run in the legacy of Harley Quinn. They've really done a great job. Now, as we move down, we also have the brand new issue of Red Hunt of the Outlaws. Hiya, dolls. Welcome to the fun house. You know that can only be one person with a giant oversized hammer. Of course, Harley Quinn facing off in, look at this, hashtag squad goals. Come on, that's the best storyline title you could possibly have. Squad goals, yes, I am all about it, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Scott Lobdell has been doing a great job, and Dexter Soy's art is really killing it. Now, as we move down as well, we've got Black Hole Rising Part 1. If you've been reading Flash, of course you know that things have been a little tumultuous in the life of Barry Allen. But now, as soon as things look like they're settling down, you see that things are going to be crazy as an old flame re-emerges. Some very cool stuff here. And I do want to show off 
this great Justice League movie variant by Mike McCone. This is possibly my favorite of all the movie variants because it's got the Flash front and center, and I'm a sucker for the Flash, as you all very well know. Now, as we move down, we've also got the brand new issue of Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps. This is part three of the Bats Out of Hell. Let's see, I know there's another cover. Boom, Ethan Van Skyver cover. Robert Vendetti and Ethan Van Skyver have been having a lot of fun on Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps, telling some crazy stories. And I mean like crazy stories. But honestly, Dawnbreaker against Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, you know that might just be the craziest thing that they've done yet. And when you see how this unfolds and with the whole Justice League and everything going on, it's crazy. It's mayhem. It's metal. Awesome stuff. Now, as we move down, you'll see an old foe has reemerged. That's right. That is Prometheus. Some cool stuff in Surgical Strike. Prisoners of Prometheus. Prometheus. Okay. So if you guys know like your DC history, you know you do not mess with Prometheus because he's like the man that makes like Batman kind of shake a little bit. He's the guy that like you face off against him. And yeah, he's just a dude, but he's a dude that will mess you up. And in Justice League of America, the team has been having a rough time lately. And now we're seeing them all facing off against Prometheus. And if you guys remember the last time the Justice League faced off against Prometheus a few years back, not everybody made it out alive. So I'm very curious to see how this unfolds. Continuing, we have the brand new issue of Michael Cray from The Wildstorm. Some very fun stories unfolding in the Wildstorm corner of the universe. And we've got a great series with Brian Hill. And of course, Warren Ellis is overseeing all the Wildstorm stuff, doing a great job there. And one of the most popular books that has come out, a book that nobody really expected to be just this amazing Mr. Miracle, and Tom King and Mitch Gerards have had an amazing time on this story, telling some really weird, fantastical stories with Mr. Miracle, with Scott Free. And of course, we've got Big Barda front and center on that Nick Darrington cover. Very great stuff unfolding in this book. And honestly, there's a reason that this thing has been selling like crazy, and it's because it is worth it. Check it out. What does it say right here? Entertainment Weekly calls it one of the most mind-bending superhero comics currently on stands. That is accurate. That is incredibly accurate. This thing is weird and existential and like it messes with your head. You got to check it out. Then as we move down, we've got the second issue of the new Ragman series from Ray Fox. It's been very dark, very spooky. It's Ragman. This doesn't look like anything that your mind can comprehend naturally. So you know that things are getting a little tricky in the world of Ragman. Some cool Gotham stories unfolding that are focusing on maybe less superheroic and more, you know, magical. Good stuff. And then we have another thrilling chapter of Secret Squirrel. No, it's Scooby Apocalypse. It's featuring a Secret Squirrel story, which is really cool because I like Secret Squirrel. But this is great. If you guys haven't been checking out Scooby Apocalypse, it's on issue 19. There's a couple trades out. Go pick it up. It is like the weirdest like, it's a trip down memory lane, because obviously it's got Scooby-Doo, but it's a complete reimagining, and it's really worth checking out. Then we have the brand new issue of Suicide Squad. Show off a couple different covers here. Really big fan of the Tony Daniel cover there. The Secret History of Task Force X. It's been great. Rob Williams is having a really good time with the Suicide Squad, and I like this cover, and I like what they're doing with this team, and I like that they all act they don't like each other. Honestly, they're all, you know, all over the place. And the secret history of Task Force X, you know that can't be good because Amanda Waller is all about secrets. So now that they're out in the open, you're not going to like that. Then we have the brand new issue of Supergirl, and I would be a fool if I didn't show off this amazing art germ cover to it. Really great book. Been totally worth your time. If you are a fan of the Supergirl TV series, you should check out the book. It's really great. Steve Orlando has been doing a great job. And now we've got Jody Hauser jumping on as well, which obviously she's done great things with so many other books such as Faith. Check out what they're doing on Supergirl. Then we have the brand new issue of Action Comics, and there's a wealth of different covers here. Right there, of course, you'll see the Yannick Paquette movie cover for Justice League featuring Batman and Wonder Woman. No, uh, no Superman on a Superman cover. Kind of, kind of interesting take. Very cool stuff going on here. Of course, it is the Oz Effect Part Five, and you'll see right here. I've got, look at that, Superman breaking the chains. Of course, that's some famous imagery for Superman that goes back way back to like the Golden Age of Superman. You know, they always show Superman breaking chains. Very exciting storyline unfolding here that is going to have major consequences 
for Superman and the entire DC Universe moving forward. Of course, if you're reading A Lonely Place of Living, you know that Mr. Oz has played a part in that as well. Now we're going to go on up and we're going to see some of the cool collected editions that are out this week, including the second volume of Batgirl. This book has been a lot of fun. Hope Larson is really doing a great job. Chris Wilde Goose on art. And I'm also just a big sucker because we've got some great covers by the likes of Francis Manipal here. Really cool stuff. I've been a big fan. And honestly, it's great to see that Batgirl is in such capable hands. As we continue to move down, you'll see that we still have copies of Batman the Dark Prince Charming. Of course, the graphic novel that set the world on fire last week. It was selling out like crazy, but we still have some. And you guys got to pick it up. It's a really great book. And then we have, this This blows my mind, this is the 15-year anniversary collection of Hush. Hush is one of the coolest and most significant Batman stories of all time. If you've never read it, it's Jim Lee, it's Jeff Loeb, and it is every single villain you can think of. It's got Riddler, it's got Joker, it's got Killer Croc. Very exciting story, and this is one of the most popular Batman stories of all time for a reason. Check it out. If nothing else, you got to see how Jim Lee draws the Batcave and like a thousand different Batmobiles in the course of the story. One of my favorite spread pages of all time. But that's not all for The Dark Knight, as we have the Batman and Robin Omnibus by Pete Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. They spent years together crafting one of the most intricate narratives in the history of Bruce Wayne, but really centering so much of it around Damian Wayne, and it was a roller coaster ride. We get to see a lot of really crazy stuff. And this is, for my money, one of the best Batman books that has come out in the last decade easily. And you can tell because it got this huge, and I mean huge, omnibus. This is great. And it's all of it, it's everything that they did. Very cool stuff. Got to check it out. One of the most important runs of the last decade for The Dark Knight. Then we also have, if you want to go a little bit further, let's keep turning that clock backwards. And let's go to the 90s where we have Nightfall. That's right, Batman, Nightfall, Omnibus, Volume 2. You'll see, who's that right there? Well, that's not Bruce Wayne. That's Asriel as Batman. And uh, the robot suit Batman that he wore, like the robot costume, is one of the craziest things to emerge from the 90s. But honestly, the story is awesome and definitely worth checking out if you haven't before. And then, as we keep going back, we're going back and back and back. Now we're in the Silver Age, and we've got Green Lantern Volume 2 from the Silver Age. Some really cool stories here. If you want to read the original adventures of the man who can always surpass fear, who can always triumph, of course, Hal Jordan, the greatest Green Lantern of all time. Although, some might argue. Now we're moving back down to the new releases, and we've got New Superman. Now, New Superman has been a lot of fun. Really been enjoying this series. A couple different covers here. Really enjoying it. And I like the character of Kong Kanan or Ken and Kong, whatever uh, variation you want to call him. He is a great character, and that is what is most important. And this book has been firing on all cylinders since day one. Then we move down, and we also have the brand new issue of Superwoman. Very fun series, very cool. Of course, Lana Lang has transformed into a really sensational hero in her own right. And then we have Titans, and this cover is terrifying. Dan Mora, what are you doing? Why does Donna Troy look like she's going to kill me, my family, and every single person I've ever walked by on the street? I don't trust that at all. That terrifies me. And this book is really great. I've been having a lot of fun. Dan Abnett's been doing a great job. And it's it can't be. We were best friends. The Titans have been betrayed read find out why it works it makes sense and you got to feel for the team you know betrayals betrayals are tough now as we move on we've also got the brand new issue of james robinson's wonder woman issue number 34 children of the gods we've got jason the brother of wonder woman you know if you guys have read your wonder woman you know that they are on, of course a lot of amazons but what about jason what about what happened with him we heard all these crazy things about him in the dark side war and now we get to find out james robinson has been having a lot of fun and then we have this really cool cover by tony daniel that celebrates 700 issues of wonder woman 700 issues can you think of that many characters that really have 700 issues i mean really let's talk about that wonder woman is in the pantheon of gods for a reason because she is simply amazing and that's great 700 issues congrats she doesn't look a day over 75 to me you know really great stuff now as we move on we also have of course, we talked about it before. Kong, 
on the Planet of the Apes. Some really crazy stuff. You can see Kong looming in the background. Look, if the Planet of the Apes is already deadly, like things already don't work out for humans on that planet, I don't want them to have a giant gorilla at all. That can't work out for anybody. That is terrifying. And that is, uh, of course, the premise of the story. You guys got to check it out. And then we move down and we have, this is very special, this is the first ever Iron Maiden comic book, Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast from Heavy Metal. Great stuff. Of course, we see Eddie right there. A couple different covers here. Really exciting to see. Let's see, I know there's more covers. To see how Iron Maiden translates from the world of music to the world of comics. And then if you want some more music, there's the Heavy Metal graphic novel which of course we got some black sabbath right on the cover how great is that now we move on and we also have from heavy metal it's a trifecta we've got the black hole repo very cool stuff here and then we hit catalyst prime excel i am a big fan of the catalyst prime books we've got excel we've got astonisher these books are really cool really worthwhile and very exciting there's also a trade paperback collection for excel that comes out today so if you want to read the entire series one through four in a trade and then issue five right there definitely worth checking out and now we have hit valiant and valiant we first have the reprinted edition of bloodshot salvation from jeff lemire and louis la rosa and miko soyan check it out it's great it's an easy jumping on point for the character of bloodshot and then we have even easier we have an issue zero for harbinger renegade this is going to be playing in major for next year's harbinger wars 2 you can start right now and find out what's going on I'm a sucker for uh, that Clayton Henry cover because I, I really like Clayton Henry's Valiant work. And this is very cool stuff. Check it out. Valiant's got some really amazing titles that are definitely worth your time. Then we've got the Deuce of Hearts from Vault Comics, a brand new series. And we hit IDW with Half Past Danger 2. Very cool story. Very great cover. I mean, that's, just, that's nice. That's serene. That's peaceful. And then for contrast, we've got this. So let, let's look at that contrast. We've got nice, peaceful, serene, and like giant robots and dinosaurs attacking, and that's crazy. That is danger. That is half past danger, too. Then we have Judge Dread the Blessed Earth number two, or number seven, sorry. And this is great. This cover actually sold out online, so if you want to pick it up, you got to come in store. And it's been a really great time. The Blessed Earth storyline has been really great for your hardcore Judge Dread fans. Great series. Definitely worth checking out. Then we have the brand new issue of Kid Lobotomy, which we talked about for a moment before, as well as the second issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters 2. So it's the second issue of 2. 2 times 2. Very cool stuff. Very fun. It's the Turtles. We see Donnie. We see Spengler. And I am really enjoying it. And it's great, of course, collaboration between two of the biggest uh, properties of the 80s and 90s, all in one magical concoction please check it out now as we move on we also have first strike closing us off the transformers tie-in very good stuff here if you're a fan of the transformers properties if you're a fan of hasbro if you're a fan of childhood if you're a fan of fun check out transformers and check out first strike it's going across a bunch of different books and it is definitely worth the time now we have the brand new issue of Alpha King from Image Comics, a very cool series, as well as the brand new issue of Birthright, issue number 28 from Joshua Williamson, great series. And we have the brand new series starting today. We've got Coyotes, issue number one by Sean Lewis and Kate Yarsky. And wait a minute, what, what, is, what is this? What is this? Herod, what is this? This is crazy. We've got Sean Lewis and Kate Yarsky right here in the store. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Doing very good, and yourself, Sean? I'm doing really well, thanks for having us. So, of course, we have this brand new book that just came out today, Coyotes. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Cle clearly, Caitlin likes to talk to the camera. Um, well, it's basically Underworld meets Sicario. We have Red, who is a 14-year-old assassin who's hunting werewolves in the Mexican desert. As you do. Yeah. As you do. I mean, when I go to Mexico, I normally just randomly hunt down wild animals. That sounds logical. Yeah. In between the margaritas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, Caitlin, you do all the art in this. What's it like exploring this brand new series in this new world? 
Oh, it's been really exciting. I mean, um, I've never done anything quite like it. It's been really interesting exploring, you know, all the action and the violence and the badassery that comes with this story. So uh, it's been really it's a, cha a challenge, but really fun. Yeah, it's definitely crazy. I'm actually, uh, if you one of you wants to take the mic, I'm going to show off a couple of these pages. Sure. Yeah, I will say that it is worth it for the art alone. Caitlin is pretty incredible. Yeah, like that. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> This is really cool. So, uh, what uh, what else? What can you tell us about the series? What's uh, what's going on? What's Red's? Uh, what's she fiending for? So, basically, she lives in a city called the City of Lost Girls. Women are going disappearing. So, a group of other women, known as the Victorias, start to gather together to hunt down the wolves and figure out what is causing all of this. Red has lost some family members her sister primarily is who she's looking for and so she starts yeah we're basically going in order this is great <laughs> <laughs> so red, red then is basically trying to figure out what has started this influx of these coyotes what do they want and where is her sister and as it goes i will say it gets crazier and crazier and crazier i think that's a fair yeah, it's pretty fair i think yeah. which Caitlin darker, darker and bloodier and you know. yeah the world just kind of keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger so it's been exciting to work on Caitlin it's also fun to have an artist that you can kind of say anything you want to and they're like oh, I can draw that <laughs> well there's obviously some crazy stuff I mean just let's we'll take a step back but like even when you open up a book and this is one of the first images that you get out of it like this is literally you open book you've got page one oh okay things look you know oh there's some blood splattered that looks okay uh, and then you open up to this and it's like you're immediately steady, setting the mood for this series. And really, I think uh, I like to think that this is setting the tone for the series. Oh, I'd say so. I mean, the <laughs> if, they, if you haven't seen it in the solicits yet, the cover for the next issue is a girl holding a werewolf's eye from its head. So it's kind of in that vein. <laughs> I like the cameraman's game. <laughs> it's, it's like, that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. This is my thing. I will also say, because Caitlin hasn't talked about it, she does everything by photo study. So you also have to imagine she so she got a lot of people to do this. Yeah, I have a lot of really uh, wonderful friends and family that will just pose in grotesque, like you know, dead okay. poses or, or action poses and things like that, and I'll just kind of use that as a reference to draw from, and it's been it's been really fun. Yeah. For me, it's amazing because I'll get photos of like her dad and her brother being arrested on cop cars. <laughs> And she's just like, these are some photos for next issue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. trying not to show, it, but there is. Oh, uh, feel free. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Caitlin is pretty amazing. I gross myself out a little bit sometimes when I'm drawing these things. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Well, you kind of have to wonder, how do you find reference for eyeballs? Like, that's the thing. Because I remember, like, when I was in, like, high school, and they're like, oh, man, you got to do a thing. I had to dissect eyeballs once for class, and it would, like, make me squeal. Like, I hated it. Uh, but you're, you're just drawing eyeballs and uh, things and all these terrible yeah. things. Let me tell you, there's like a whole, we could go into that at some point about like just the crazy amounts of reference. I mean, I don't know like who watches the Google searches people do, but mine, my history <laughs> is like messed up. <laughs> so basically the cops are going to come straight to you whenever there's some weird unsolved case. They're going to be like, you know, Caitlin Yarsky, she was Googling some weird stuff a couple wheels back and that happened to some dude. Yeah, it seems so normal. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very exciting. What do uh, what do people have to look forward to in this? Um, I think government conspiracy, a lot more murder, probably a good amount of cursing, a uh, lot of myth, a lot of myth, and some badass women with katana blades. Well, I'm very excited, and I'm also, I'm honestly, I'm frankly terrified because just the implications of your Google searches alone makes me really unsettled and but like in the good way and like the oh man like I won't be able to sleep tonight but like I'll be thinking of Caitlin's art all night so you know that works out I guess awesome well thank you so much for popping in and telling us about the book uh, we will be uh, signing a couple copies so uh, you guys can keep an eye out we'll be uh, putting some up and you should check out the series because it really it really is off to a crazy start <laughs> thank you very much Thanks for having us. Well, cool. So now we're going to keep on walking. We're going to keep on talking. We've got a lot of stuff. We're going to slip this in right here. And we're going to continue down. We've got the brand. Woo! And we have a, a savior. Thank you. We have uh, the brand new issue of Divided States of Hysteria by Howard Chaikin, which has been a very crazy series. And then we also have the brand new issue of Injection. Our uh, buddy Declan Shalvey was here a couple weeks ago. 
his uh, solo stuff on uh, Injection has been amazing with Warren Ellis. Been really great. Then we also have the brand new issue of Kingsman, The Red Diamond, of course. Uh, this is part of Mark Millar's uh, Miller World stuff, which is crazy. And if you guys saw, there's been some crazy developments in the world of Miller World, so you should always keep an eye on uh, what he's got going. And then we have the brand new series, Port of Earth, which we talked about for a moment earlier from Zach Kaplan. Very cool series. If you want some alien sci-fi with some great designs by Andrea Muti, this is definitely up your alley if you want some cool sci-fi stuff. I know that Zach has been really excited about this book for a long time, and I'm excited to see it on the stands. Now we're going to take a look up real quick, and we're going to talk about some of the graphic novels that we've got over here. We've got the brand new issue of Justice League of America. That's Volume 2, Curse of the King Butcher. You see everything's crazy. The story is called Curse of the King Butcher. You know somebody's getting hurt, and you know it's going to be awesome. Very good stuff. Steve Orlando's been having a lot of fun over on that series with Felipe Watanabe on art for this arc. Then as we move down, we've got some Justice League Collector's Edition. Get hyped for the new movie in paperback and hardcover. Oh, have, I, have I told you guys how much I just love this poster? Because I love this poster. That makes me really happy. Very excited for the Justice League movie uh, next week. Keep an eye on our social media channels for some cool stuff soon. Then we also have the... Titans Lazarus Contract Hardcover Edition. This was a crossover between Titans, Teen Titans, and Deathstroke just a couple months ago. If you want to check out what happens when Deathstroke gets uh, a bit of a supercharge. He gets uh, amped up, as it were. And he takes on everybody under the sun, and it's awesome. It's very cool. Then we have the brand new, well, brand new. We have the vo latest volume of Northlanders from Brian Wood, of course. Some great stuff there. And then we have a new hardcover edition of Trillium from Jeff Lemire, writing it, drawing it. And Trillium is great, and I love this. This is some cool design. It's flipping around. You see it's got some upside down, some regular stuff. If you didn't read Trillium, you missed out. But don't worry, the hardcover's here, so check it out. Then we also have the super awesome complete year one for Doctor Who, number 12, Doctor 12, whatever you want to call him, the 12th Doctor is the preferred term. Very cool stuff. And then we have the Harry Potter Journey Through a History of Magic. Of course, Harry Potter is always amazing, and he's got such an in-depth world, the world of wizardry, and you can explore it. Then there is something that I think is very cool. Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, of course, from Black Mask. It's been a great series. If you want your weird, you know, gang of kids that are all roped up in something that's completely bigger than any of them are capable of handling. It's really great. You can see right here all the praise from all the people that love this book because everybody I've ever known to read this book loved it. Everybody fell in love with it, and it's a great series and very cool. And you can pick it up, and next week we've got a signing with Matt Rosenberg, one of the writers from this, and you can pick it up, bring it to him, and he'll probably smile because he loves the book. He's a big fan, and, you know, it's easy to see why. Then there's... Spectrum 24, if you want some photography and fantasy. Star Trek Discovery, a cool collector's edition with some concept art. And then we also have Star Trek Waypoint, which of course has the cast of Next Gen. As we move down, what's that? That's Paper Girls hardcover. And that is, of course, Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang doing some amazing, amazing work on Paper Girls. This is one of the coolest books that is coming out right now. And look at this nice, slick hardcover. You know what would be even better? It would be really awesome if there was a signing tomorrow with Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff. Oh, wait a minute. There is in Midtown Comics Downtown. You guys should swing by tomorrow night, Midtown Comics Downtown, pick up the Paper Girls hardcover, have them sign it. It's so gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. This is I'm triple dipping on the series. I have the single issues. I have the trade paperback. Now I have the hardcover. And it's because this book is amazing. Please check it out. And please join us tomorrow to meet Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be crazy. Then we have the first volume of Rose, a series by Meredith Finch and Iguara. And I love Iguara's art. Iguara's art is awesome. First uh, saw it on Blue Beetle years ago. But, man, Rose is like some next-level stuff. And then we still have copies of the Negan story. Here's Negan from The Walking Dead. If you guys want to find out about the baddest man with a bat, check out Here's Negan. Find out his dark uh, origin story. He's not, a, he's not a happy guy. He was happy once, but, you know, not so much anymore. We also have the brand new issue of Redlands from Jordi Belair. Very cool horror, horror series if you uh, want to check out something uh, a little spooky. 
very good series. And then we have Rock Candy Mountain as well. Chapter 5, A Hobo Came A-Walkin'. Rock Candy Mountain is a really fun series, really cool stuff. Then also from Jeff Lemire, who of course we love because of Trillium, but we gotta love him for Royal City, because Royal City is really great, and it's from Image, and you know it's great, because it's Jeff Lemire, and it's Image. When you put the two of those in one sentence, you know that you've got something great, and you gotta check it out. Now, let's uh, shuffle this over, because we've also got the brand new issue of Scales and Scoundrels from Sebastian Gurner. This is really fun, and it's cool, it's got fantasy, it's got something for everybody, and it's something that you can hand off. It's a good family-friendly book. Check it out. Now, if you want something a little crazier, a little more uh, punch, if you would, we've got the brand new series, Slots, issue number two, but don't worry, issue number one, reprint, right there. That's really cute. That's great. They do a second show added. That's a really fun way to make a second printing. And this is a really fun series from Skybound, which is, of course, an image imprint. And it's Dan Panosian. And if you haven't seen his art, well, you can see it here on the cover. The guy is ridiculously talented. Really amazing stuff, and I'm really excited. Now, as we move down, we've got the second printing of Avengers 672, which was the Marvel Legacy starting point for that series. And uh, they're only on 673, so it's easy to catch up. And then we have the brand new issue of Uncanny Avengers Stars and Garters. That's Juggernaut, that's Quicksilver, that's Synapse. And this is a bad combination because Juggernaut does not stop for anybody. And he looks like he has bad intentions. Jim Zub has been doing a great job on Uncanny Avengers for a while now and really telling a cool story with this team. Now, as we move down, we've got a blank book for Daredevil because it is, of course, a jumping on point. Mayor Fisk, part one. If you guys read what was going on in Daredevil these last few months, if you were reading Doctor Strange, perchance, during Secret Empire, you've seen that Kingpin, or if you read the Kingpin book a few months back by uh, Matt Rosenberg, you've seen that Kingpin has kind of been slowly building himself a base of power. He's been in different books. He's been all over the place because Kingpin is building a lot of goodwill, and now he is running for mayor of New York, and there is no way, like literally 0% chance that Matt Burdock is okay with that. Like literally zero. He wants to just punch him in the face repeatedly for probably a, about a month or two, just straight, because Kingpin is a, a horrible, horrible man, and I can't imagine this is going to end well for Matt, because now he's the law. And very cool cover here. I really like this, because of course we've got some uh, Dark Phoenix action on the homage uh, to this lenticular. So that's great. Very fun series. Not fun for Matt, though. Whew. Now, as we move down, we've also got the brand new issue of Deadpool, and I always love these comic book covers by Scott Koblish. And I'm really loving this current storyline, Deadpool Kills Cable. So, issue one, right? We've got, or issue one, but issue 287, the first part of the storyline, we've got Deadpool totally owns Cable, right? Like, Deadpool, like, beats him, does all this crazy stuff. After all, it's called Deadpool Kills Cable, right? But last issue, Cable's like, all right, I see what you got, now I'm going to show you what I got. And he brings it back, and now the two of them are really just beating each other senseless. And they've got dinosaurs that are going to try to eat them. And this is, there's no way this ends well for anybody. But the book ends well for readers, so check it out. And we also have the second issue of Falcon by Rodney Barnes. Really cool series, really great. If you want to check out what Sam Wilson is up to, as well as his new sidekick the patriot this is great and we've got the demonic black heart looming in the distance very good stuff here and we get to see literally a journey through hell in this issue like quite literally they go to hell and that's awesome then we have the brand new issue of gwenpool gwenpool is like hey i want to be an avenger what do i got to do to be an avenger oh i probably got to beat some like really marquee villains right hey that dr doom guy he doesn't seem too nice this is not a good thing to do you don't pick a fight with dr doom and you definitely don't do it if you're Gwenpool, because Gwenpool is really capable, but Dr. Doom's Dr. Doom. I don't think there's really anybody that could take him on one-on-one, -on -one. but maybe Gwenpool can find a way, and maybe you guys will pick it up and check it out, because it's really awesome. Christopher Hastings is doing a great job on that book. Now, as we move down, we have a reprinted edition of the last issue of Jessica Jones, issue number 13, and we've got the brand new issue, issue number 14, by Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Gatos. Of course, the two of them have been on Jessica Jones from the beginning. They are the creators of the character, and this book is bringing up some really bad memories for Jessica because we see the Purple Man has reemerged. You can see him on that reprinted edition, but you can see him right here, and this is a gorgeous cover. This is a gorgeous cover by David Mack. I mean... That's unreal how pretty that is. Now we're going to bump up, and we're going to talk about some of the 
finest collections that are out this week, such as the brand new volume of Black Panther, Volume 4, Avengers of the World, Part 1. Of course, ta Coates has built a magical world for Black Panther with some crazy stuff going on, and the world is growing, hence Avengers of the New World. Then we also have a Marvel Masterworks collection of The Incredible Hulk, issues 184 through 196 by Len Wein, Herb Trimp, and Sal Buscema. Very cool. And we have Volume 7 of The Runaways, Old Lace. What you doing? I love Old Lace. And this storyline is called Live Fast, and it's great stuff. If you haven't read the original Runaways run, you are you're really missing out. It's actually really tremendous. Brian K. Vaughn does some amazing stuff on that series. Pick it up. Have him sign it tomorrow. It'd be great. Then we have the brand new volume of Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Volume 3. This is some great stuff, and this one is actually just explicitly called Miles Morales as we get to take a peek into his life. You see that he's got a wonderful supporting cast, and of course, gold balls. Gotta love gold balls. Now as we move down, we also have Star Wars Darth Maul, son of Dothamir. Very cool series that actually explores the history of Darth Maul. Of course, Darth Maul is a great character, a great Sith Lord. And here we get to see uh, a bit more of what makes him so cool. And if you want to double your money and get more Star Wars value, you've got Star Wars Force Awakens, the graphic novel adaptation. It's got the entire movie, and it's got it all in book. So if you want to reread the book before the movie comes out for Last Jedi, then you'll be brought up to speed. It's great. Then we have zombies in a fun little digest size. So if you're a manga fan, because this is printed like a manga, so it reads front to back. Very cool. Pick up the digest of that. And then we also have Edge of Venomverse, which led into the crazy Venomverse story that has uh, been unfolding in Marvel. Very cool. Very exciting. It's Venom, and it's a whole lot of them. And honestly, more than one Venom sounds terrifying to me. Now we're back to the new releases, and we've got Master of Kung Fu issue 126, and it's by CM Punk. And that makes me really excited because it's CM Punk, of course, noted uh, WWE superstar, indie darling, and he's done some UFC as well, very famously. And Shang-Chi is in perfect hands. I mean, it just makes sense. It's Shang-Chi's day off. And when you're a superhero, it's really hard to find the time. And, you know, you're always fighting people. You're always punching people. And honestly, I don't even think a day off is going to be that peaceful for him. You got to check it out because it's a one shot and it's easy to jump into a one shot because you know you're getting a full story. Definitely worth your time. Definitely worth your money. Very excited for that. Then as we move down, we've got a brand new series. Moon Knight is back. Issue 188. That's right. 188 issues of Moon Knight. And honestly... I don't think that he, he's been like a hundred different thousand personalities in those hundred eight issues. He is such a m crazy guy, and Moon Knight has so many different personalities. Let's show off this uh, cool different covers here. We've got the main cover. We've got the Mike McCone head cover. You want to get a profile, you get the trading card cover, because on the back, it's got all of his info. It's got all his stats, you know, height, weight, all that. And then we've got the lenticular cover, which is really cool. Bill Sienkiewicz, of course, doing this one. Very cool. And this series is great. It's from Max Bemis, who has done some really cool books. He did uh, X the worst X-Men ever book recently for Marvel, which if you didn't check that out, definitely worth the time. And I'm very excited to see what he does with Moon Knight. He's aiming to give him an arch rival. That can't be good. Like, you know, he could barely keep himself straight. What's he going to do when he's got somebody who keeps pestering him, you know? Now, we move down. We've got the brand-new issue of Miss Marvel from uh, G. Willow Wilson. Always excited to see Miss Marvel. And this is a really cute cover. Really fun, really playful. And as we move down, we also have the brand-new issue of Royals, Fire from Heaven. Medusa, this is some clever cover design because, of course, you see the classic Medusa hair. But you see what she looks like these days. And, frankly, her hairline's receding quite a bit, you know. It's not polite to point it out, but, you know. The poor thing, she's had better hair days. But this book has been great. Ali Wing is really having a good time. And uh, Javier Rodriguez is on art. And if you guys haven't seen his art before, he's crazy. He really does some great stuff. Now, as we move down, we've got the brand new issue of Runaways. Runaways is going to be on Hulu in like two weeks. So if you guys are super pumped for Runaways, check out the comic book. Because Rainbow Rowell and Chris Anka have been doing a great job. And Carolina Dean on the cover here really looks amazing. I'm really a big fan of Chris Anka's character designs for this book. It is really a great read. 
Then as we move down, we've also got the brand new issue of She-Hulk. And that's right, I said She-Hulk. I didn't say Hulk, I said She-Hulk. Because today is the day that Jen Walters goes back to the moniker of She-Hulk. It goes back to the original Marvel Legacy numbering, and it goes back... Well, actually, it's always been a great book. It's always been amazing. If you guys haven't been reading Hulk this last year, you're missing out on a really cool character introspective series. I've been really enjoying it. Let's show off this cool cover over here that is, of course, an homage to some classic Incredible Hulk. You see the leader is here to take Jen Walters and just make her life miserable. And her life has already been decently miserable, so I don't think he needed to add grief onto her plate, but... You know what? He's the kind of guy where he doesn't care what you got going on, man. He's just going to mess up your day. And what a jerk, you know? What a jerk, that leader guy. Now, as we move down, we've got another startling new Marvel Legacy storyline in Spider-Man Deadpool Arms Race Part 1. Let's see if we've got it. Oh, we do. We've got the very cool lenticular cover that is, of course, an homage to some classic Craven action. And I am craving some action in this series because Spider-Man and Deadpool are at each other's throats. This is not good. It's now Spider-Man versus Deadpool. It's a subtle thing, but that is a big change because that means Spider-Man and Deadpool are going to probably have one of the worst fallouts ever. You know, everybody's been advertising this saying the bromance is over. But like, to be honest, like that's Deadpool and there's bombs on that shark and Spider-Man. He, he's not a great swimmer. He gets all webby. You know, it's. It's not going to work out. It's really scary. Then we uh, continued out, and we've got the brand new issue of Spirits of Vengeance. Issue number two, if you guys uh, missed out on the first issue by Victor v Gishler, you are missing out on a cool, spooky story that's got all of Marvel's dark characters, and it's great to see them all in one spot. I'm excited because we've got Blade back, and Blade is awesome. Blade is always awesome, so it's very cool to have him in a new book. Then we also have Unbeatable Squirrel Girl issue 26 and this is a special zine issue and that's really funny because like obviously like zines are like you know they're kind of homemade graphic novel things you make them they're magazines they're cute they're fun and this book is nothing but cute and fun and i'm really excited ryan north and uh, erica henderson have been doing a great job on that and that's really clever that's just creative unbeatable squirrel girl and pals special zine issue buy it it's awesome then we have a brand new creative team on Star Wars, starting this issue. Kieran Gillen and Salvador La Roca take over. Of course, if those names sound familiar, and, you know, the pairing with Star Wars sounds familiar, it's because the two of them had an amazing run on Darth Vader just a couple years ago. That was one of the most critically acclaimed runs of the time, and now they're on Star Wars, and I can't wait to see what they've got going on. I really like this uh, homage cover that shows off uh, some Star Wars lore. This is actually great because it's one of those moments you don't actually get in the final cut of the movies. It's in the original deleted scenes, and, you know, it's big, so it's great. Now we move on, and we've got the Thor Ragnarok movie special. We've got a bunch of different covers. We've got Hela. We've got Thor. And I'll tell you, this Thor movie is a hell of a good time. Ha! I made a pun with both their names. Woo! That was awful. I hate myself. But really, I don't hate this movie. I love this movie. And you should check out the uh, movie guide because it really does add that extra layer to the movie. Then we have the brand new issue of Venom. Very exciting story in Lethal Protector. And it's Craven taking on Venom. And Venom is trying to protect dinosaur people by hunting Craven. That is an awesome sentence that I get to say. That is an awesome book that I get to read. And hopefully you guys are too because it's really great. Mike DaCosta and uh, Mark Bagley are having a lot of fun, and it's definitely worth the time. And then as we get ready to close off, we've got Director's Cut issue number six of The Vision. So that's what was originally issues 11 and 12 of The Vision series, collected in one spot, Tom King and Gabriel hernandez Walta. Very amazing series, critically acclaimed, and there's a reason they made this supersized Director's Cut. Definitely worth the time. Then we have The Zombies Assembled 2, issue number four. If you guys want to pick up that little manga edition, then you can pick up the current issue to be caught up. And then we've got Generation X, issue number eight. We're getting real close to the Marvel Legacy stuff, and we are seeing some classic elements of Generation X coming back as we see that Monet is not really going to be happy. Like, this is not going to be good for her, but it's going to be good for us because it's going to be great. And then we have X-Men Gold, issue number 15, Mojo Worldwide, part five. This story has been crazy. It's got Mojo, it's got the X-Men, and it's got a cool cover because the X-Men are inside of a TV, and that's funny because, you know, it's Mojo. 
and also because it's just clever because the X-Men have been on TV and they're currently on TV because they've got a TV show. I don't know if you guys are watching Gifted, but they're on TV. They're, they're on the silver screen. They're on movies. They're in comics. They actually, the X-Men are everywhere. And honestly, there's just a lot of great books. I am super excited. My brain is practically scrambled at how excited. And I want to just give an extra special shout out to Sean Lewis and Caitlin Yarsky for coming by. Check out Coyotes. And please join us tomorrow. We've got an amazing signing. And whoa! What? 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 We've, we've even got one last surprise. Hello, Vic. Oh, hello, Henry. I'm, I, I found this at the workstation. It seems to be a Marvel value stamp book to put all the stamps that have been coming out of all the Mar new Marvel Legacy books. Wow, now that's, now that's something special. So if you're buying all the Marvel Legacy books, you're getting all these stamps. Now this is really cool. This is a great way to collect it all. Now how much is it? This is free. Now wait a minute. You're telling me that this great way to show that you are collecting the entire line of comics is free? Yeah. We have them while supplies last at our counter. Come come one, come all, come down and get it. If you guys need to know which books you need, Marvel was so kind as to give you a list of the books you will need for these stamps. So this is in one package, one free package, mind you. It gives you a place to put your stamps. Yep. And it tells you every single Marvel Legacy book that is being published? Absolutely. And not to mention, it's free. And it's free. That's amazing. This is great. This is an amazing thing. So you guys got to come by. You got to pick up some comics. You got to pick up some of the Marvel Legacy titles so you can put the stamps inside the book. And it's free. Look. Numbered. One through, looks like uh, we're, we're, we're going way past the 50s. Oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, this the, the, I, I came in today. This is this is. This is, this is a treat for the fans. If, if they're collecting these, um, I'm pretty sure they've been asking for, hey, where are we going to put these? We don't want, they don't want to rip it out of the book. Well, here you go. Marvel came through, and they got you something really cool. Uh, give you a little something on my, what they on my Marvel Legacy, a little preview for Je Jean Grey's Resurrection. I know people are pretty excited for that. And this, honestly, this was what's going to help out a lot. I know people are going to be asking, hey, which books have these stamps in them? Right here. Every single one of these, you can find the stamp in while we still have the books available. If we ever sell out, there's always the website you guys can find to get any of these back issues. Well, thank you so much for dropping some knowledge. And uh, very excited to hear that. So uh, you guys heard it here. You got to come by, pick up some books, pick up the value stamp guide, and uh, swing by tomorrow for a signing with Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. Mine is blown. Mine's blown. It's crazy. It's mania. It's amazing. It's Wednesday. It's new comic book day. See you soon.